Listen up because you're going to hear something pretty great. It's something that Bob Boylan from NPR has called pure, irresistible joy. So here they are, David Wax Museum. You can barely breathe. You've been sobbing so hard, you can barely breathe. You've been stitching your heart on the outside of your sleeve. You've been stitching your heart on the outside of your sleeve. You've been wrong out in the doubt with grief. In the ocean of time, this moment. That's David Wax Museum right there, and I'm welcoming now, right here, sitting down with me, moving their way over, uh, a couple of the members of David Wax Museum, really the core of this group, the founding members. Uh, tell us who you are, you guys. My name is Suze Slezak. Not the best radio name, but that's, there you that's have it. That's actually a pretty good radio name. <laughs> I don't know. It's got alliteration. Enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my name is David Wax. So you're the namesake of the band. I am. This is your I museum. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so I want to talk a, a little bit, you guys, about uh, something that's gotten a lot of attention about your music over the years. You guys have four albums out. This is your fourth full-length uh, mm -hmm. record. And uh, a lot has been written and talked about about this uh, blend of 
uh, Mexican folk music and and this kind of amalgam of American music and rock. Um, and I, I want to talk a little bit about these these Mexican roots. And and David, I think this is I think this is really largely something that you went and mined over a period of time in your life. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got interested in that and how you started to study that kind of music? Sure. Well, I first uh, found myself down in Mexico uh, after my first year of college, and I was down there doing volunteer work uh, with the American Friends Service Committee um, that was partnering with the Mexican NGO doing rural development work in La Huasteca, which is a region about eight hours north of Mexico City is where I was. And um, they play son huasteco there, which is a particular type of rural Mexican folk music. And I fell in love with the music then. I, I didn't think I would ever try to learn to play it or anything, but I got a bunch of CDs and tapes. I started dancing to the music while I was down there and just fell in love with this style of music. It really swept me away. So I kept finding myself back down in Mexico uh, doing more volunteer work, and then I ended up studying Latin American history and literature at Harvard, and so that gave me more opportunities to be down there. And when I graduated from Harvard, I got a fellowship to spend a year down there studying Mexican folk music. Mm. And so that was in 2006, 2007. And so I traveled around. I found a couple of really good teachers uh, in three different regions of Mexico, and so I was fo focusing on three different styles of son. Um, and got a bunch of new instruments, learned a lot of new songs, uh, and then moved back to Boston. And that's when I met Suze, and, we, and that was five years ago, and we started the band here in Boston. Had you been, uh, had you already been a musician when you went down to Mexico? Had you been playing music uh, for years already, and then this particular kind of music caught your ear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I'd been playing music since I was 10, uh, when I grew, you know, was playing growing up in central Missouri, and uh, got, into, you know, started songwriting when I was 13, playing electric guitar, playing in the garage band. What kind of songs were you writing then? Uh, like, what were you listening to? <laughs> well, we were, I was, like we were really into uh, They Might Be Giants. Yes. And so there was, my cousin Jordan played accordion, and so there was a kind of an accordion. Uh, guitar duo. Yeah, and it Very got more, cool. you know. What could be cooler as a 13-year-old <laughs> than right, a guitar accordion duo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, give us some song oh, titles. Uh, Brainwashed. Nice. Um, All right, just some lyrics from Brainwashed. Oh, my <laughs> I think Suze, Suze knows them. Do you know them? <laughs> well, his dad always wants the band to, you know, kind of revamp these songs. <laughs> and he really to go back to the old. So he liked your <laughs> earlier stuff. Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about song music um, and, and what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you said sure. there are different kinds of song music. Can you give us a little bit more background? Yeah, on that? Yeah, love that to. Is? So song is, is a general catch-all term for this, this style of rural folk music that in, um, in its core, it's a fusion of Spanish music that came over with the, the Spanish, uh, with indigenous music of the people that were already living in Mexico before the Spanish came, and with African influences, because there were a lot of Africans that were enslaved on sugar plantations, particularly in southern Veracruz, which is where Son Jarocho comes from, and that's one of the main styles that influences what we do in the David Wax Museum. Um, so you have those three things coming together in this kind of rural dance music. It's music that's part of community festivals, kind of the saint days of the town, uh, sometimes some, when someone gets married, any kind of celebratory event in the community, you have all these people coming together, dancing on a raised wooden platform, playing acoustic music. Mm. Uh, it's all string bass, essentially. And, um, and there's a lot of improvisational aspects to it. Um, but Mexico is so regionally diverse and so rich in, in each region that you end up with n basically nine different styles of sewn. Mm. And they're kind of cousins to each other, and, and there's a lot of similarities. Sometimes there's the same song that they're playing, but in their own unique way. Um, but you can travel just a couple hours, and then all of a sudden they're playing different instruments in this yeah. group of sewn, totally different rhythms. Uh, so it's a, it's really, uh, so it's kind of a broad catch-all for, for this really rich style of Mexican folk music. All right, well, let's get into that next song. What are, we gonna play? What are you going to play for us here? We're going to play a song from our last record. Uh, this is the song that uh, was uh, one... Uh, song of the Year last year at the Boston Music Awards. Certainly it's called did. Born with a Broken Heart. Here we go. David Wax Museum live on Boston Public Radio. I was born broken hearted boy give or take an ounce In the world give me a break waiting ready to pound I was born Broken heart, broken heart, she was broken. I was born. Broken heart, broken heart, she was broken. Ooh, into. If you 
her out Wondering the streets Knock on my window It'll open My bed is small So I'll be Let the last know It's open You were born Broken heart Broken heart You were broken You were born Broken heart Broken heart You were broken Ooh, into Sometimes we David Wax Museum, born with a broken heart. Uh, come on over here, guys. We're going to do a little bit more talking. Welcome back, guys. That sounded good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. How are you feeling? You feeling good about what you're doing here oh, right yeah. now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. To WGBH. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So uh, we talked a little bit, David, with you uh, about your sort of background and this fascination with this Mexican folk music. Um, Suze, what's your, what's, how did you come to this music? You have a, you, you kind of come out of more of a bluegrass fiddle tradition, right? Yeah, I grew up in central Virginia. And I, I grew up playing lots of music. Uh, my family really, really, my parents pushed it, and my brothers and I all sang and played a couple instruments as kids. Pushed um, it in a good way or pushed it in a almost well, pushed you away from you music kind of way? Who are you asking, me or my parents? I'm asking, <laughs> well, I don't think your parents are here, so. No, um, they really encouraged it, and and because of that, my brothers and I are are all musicians in, in some way. Uh, neither of them do it professionally like I do, but... Um, I think as a kid, I maybe resented the mm. all the all the pressure of of practicing all the time. But um, we also loved it, and it was really part of our life and family. I grew up in an old time community um, of musicians, so I learned old time fiddle music um, from a young age, and then chose to study Irish music as a high schooler. And were you when you were you know you say you grew up in an old time community? You, you obviously music sort of a big part of your life kind of being pushed by your parents and stuff like that was there were you was there a part of you that was trying to break out of that were you listening to other things or was it or were you sort of hmm. in that bubble almost yeah, that's completely a good question I was pretty steeped in the foot in folk yeah. music so I don't I wasn't wasn't kind of seeking other music than that to listen to I'd say I went to a lot of bluegrass festivals growing up yeah and oh there was old-time festival right in my neighborhood and out in the country in in rural Virginia that was kind of the highlight of our year. Yeah. Um, but I guess I didn't think I'd be a musician. It was just sort of something that I always did. And I mm -hmm. thought, well, I could always fall back and I could always do music if I had to, if yeah, nothing yeah. else worked out. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here you I are am. playing music professionally. Um, uh, how did, so, so how did you get from uh, I do this all the time with my family to I'm doing this professionally? Well, let's see. I guess I, I went to college. I went to Wellesley outside of Boston. Okay. And then traveled. What were you studying in college? Oh, I studied liberal arts, but kind of did anthropology was my major. Okay. Um, and then I traveled on a fellowship to study spinning of natural fibers mm -hmm. and thought I was going to go home and start a farm school after that. Okay. But didn't end up doing that. I um, <laughs> kind of got back into music a little bit and was starting to play more and teach more and then ended up back in Boston um, where I 
met David and I was already playing in two bands, kind of uh, old time bands at that point. And he convinced me to buy a jawbone in addition to the fiddle. Yeah, and talk uh, about the jawbone thing. Well, it's a, it's a Mexican instrument that they play in the Son Jorocho style. We didn't hear it on that little clip. Right. Um, but it's, it's Certainly in your recorded music, we hear a lot of it, right? And yeah, it's, it's an actual place. jawbone. Oh, yeah. It's the, the, the bone from, from an animal that's still, from a donkey that still has its teeth in it. Yeah. Um, so it's a great percussion instrument. So you get the rat a tat tat as you like drag a stick across the teeth. Yep, that's the and, idea. And you hit the side and the teeth rattle in their sockets. That's the other, the other sound that makes. I'm sorry, I don't have it right here. Got my, my jawbone and my spare jawbone out in the van. But Both jawbones in the van. Absolutely. A classic situation. <laughs> so how did you guys meet and start, uh, how did you guys connect these dots? We sort of got this, you know, David studying, you mm-hmm. know, folk music in Mexico and you with this old time tradition, you're in Boston. How did it all come together? Yeah, well, I um, had gone to a small school in California before I came here to Harvard, a small school called Deep Springs College. And it's a very, you know, there's just 13 people admitted a year. So it's a very small, tight community. And, uh, so as soon as I got back to Boston, I kind of asked my friends and, and asked a guy who'd gone to Deep Springs with me um, if he knew any musicians in town. So very quickly, I mean, I put flyers all all over Boston you trying to find musicians. Way. That's how the Pixies got it. Yeah, got but, it going but nobody. Too. Unfortunately, I didn't see a yeah. poster. <laughs> <Eventually, laughs> but they didn't but really, work at all. Didn't work at all. <laughs> and uh, so really, after you know a month of putting up flyers. The and thing is, David, I saw those flyers recently, and. Um, because they're still up. <laughs> <laughs> nobody has responded six years later. <laughs> No, but um, Dave was going through some old archives and, and, and showed me one of those posters, and they had no color on it, so I wouldn't have caught my yeah, eye. Yeah, it was just black and white. It was That's a real boring photo then. of the desert oh. and yeah, <laughs> a, list of 20 desert? Inst- a list of 20 instruments. He said, if you play the fiddle, cello, bass, guitar, <laughs> mandolin, banjo, drummer. <laughs> Casting a wide me. net. <laughs> yeah, I just thought, it, but maybe too wide. Yeah. But eventually it was word of mouth. I mean, we... Uh, I met Suze through this mutual friend of ours, and then uh, we played with this guy, Jack, who I'd known from, from living here previously, and we, we started playing with this guy, Jiro Kakubu, who I'd met at the Cantab, who played um, Bluegrass and was studying at Berkeley. Mm-hmm. So that was the four of us were kind of at the beginning of the band, and uh, then kind of people then came and went, and we've had the fortune of playing with a lot of great musicians from the Boston area. Right now with us today here is our, our good friend Alex Spiegelman, who... Has, uh, does the horn arra- arrangements for our record and will be with us on December 1st at that big show at the Sinclair. Yep. And um, so we've kind of, you know, there's been a revolving cast of, of wonderful people around us um, here in the Boston community, um, but uh, we've been kind of the constant core of the band. S- uh, Suze, you kind of, as you said earlier, kind of came out of this different tradition. Did you immediately take to, to David's work, to David's songs, and... Or was it, or was there some convincing that had to well, happen? <laughs> I'm guessing by your convincing. faces that there was I'd some convincing. I'd say there was convincing. I mean, to be honest, I David invited me. We kind of were introduced by this mutual friend. He invited me to a house show that he was performing at at his own house. That was the um, only gig I could get at the time. <laughs> so, so I, I headlining went, I in went his own <laughs> living room. So I went to that show, and um, I have to say, I was not that into the music. Yeah. Because his earlier songwriting wasn't didn't, didn't it me. hadn't blossomed it yet, hadn't, hadn't despite his grown. father being <laughs> into the <Europe>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and and the Mexican aspect was completely new to me. Yeah. So it it definitely you know in our earlier kind of um, the earlier part of this band we did some songs that had a real Mexican twist yes. on them and y- some that were pure. Americana folk music so that I was able to latch right onto and play the fiddle on and har- sing harmony with and that that was no problem but the uh the Mexican tux um Mexican songs took some experimentation and yeah. new instruments and things like that uh, have you take I mean do you feel like you've taken to them I mean is it uh, have oh you changed yeah. as a as a musician oh yeah I love it I mean thinking about rhythm I think about rhythm in a whole new way and I it's the job one's the first percussion instrument I've ever played. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping to learn some of the dancing, which is also a really rhythmic aspect of the, the music. Is the dancing percussive, David? Is it a lot of like feet on the ground kind exactly, of thing? Exactly, yeah. So there's that raised wind platform, the tarima, yeah. and then they do zapateado is what they call it. And so there are these clogs, um, and they're dancing very quickly, very fast. Yeah. Um, and it's really the core. I mean, all the musicians are staying around the dancers at the center. Cool. And so that's really the percussive heart of this music. Very cool. Can we hear another song? Yeah, we'd love to play another song from uh, from our new record. This is called Vivian. Like a 
last breath in a frying pan. I take stock for oh, what a mess of a man I am. I've grown as rotten as an old sweet tooth. I can't lie, but I've gotten. I know how to win things, but I don't know how to begin, oh baby, yeah. We smoldered as fiercely as sugar cane. When the nights blindfolded David Wax Museum live from the Fraser Performance Center here at WGBH. Uh, I'm going to ask the, the guys to come back here. You guys always like to come back to town and play here. Oh, yeah, we love it. We love it. We still have so many f friends and fans and just kind of a lot of the core people that have been supporting us since the beginning. Uh, so it's always really exciting to, to reconnect with those people and uh, the people that kind of got us off the ground. Yeah. Do you guys have a favorite venue in town? Either to play or to see? I think it's still Toad. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? Toad at, over in Cambridge. Yeah. Um, it's just an awesome, it's great, tiny, yeah. great spot. intimate space. Yeah, when we all met, we all lived within walking distance of Toad, so we would all yeah. like walk our gear over there and, and play at, you know, till 2 in the morning. And then all On a Sunday night, and then have to get up for work the next morning. <laughs> yeah. But now you guys are playing, you guys are playing pr pretty big venues. I mean, you guys made a, you guys were... Huge at Newport Folk Festival. You guys played South by Southwest. It just keeps getting bigger, huh? We're, yeah, we've been touring. We just got back from Europe and uh, and China recently too. So cool, very cool. David Wax Museum. Can you guys play us out one more yeah, song we'd love here? Yeah, we to. This is the Leopard Girl. We're gonna play us out one last time here with Leopard Girl. Up your ears. 
easel and your brush And I will versed in art But I know this much Baby going to do it for another edition of Maybe Boston Public Radio. We will be back rain. tomorrow, of course, with our week in review. We're also going to talk with my the face. dancer and choreographer who's got show a really cool show happening this weekend at the NFA, uh, which is about radio, of I all things. Uh, so for Emily Reed, I'm Edgar B. Herwick III. Our show is a production of WGH Radio. Have a great You're afternoon. Not so that I think Kiss, 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 with eyes open wide. The words and the truth do everything but collide. Well, I once heard of the leopard girl, my father leopard in a mother's womb. When she was younger, they kept it locked in the storage room, yeah. But when she came of age and went out in the world, some people saw a leopard, early saw a beautiful girl. I want to know how I love You're not me, so there are things that I can't hide. They say, don't trust love is infatuated with your divineness. Being in love is just one step removed from blindness.